So we're going to drill around in two slashes here with the Sandvik 422i. Um, I like to, here I'm starting off with my lifters, and I usually have start one in the fa one in the middle, one off to the side, and I always try and have them work away from each other. This gives the most amount of room and visibility. You know, if you're going to use it on auto, a lot of times you drill one one lifter, one knee hole, one lifter, one knee hole, all the way across. And then uh, you don't risk the, the boom scraping into the floor at all. Get my spotlight up there. See, I got my lifters done. And I uh, see I got the nice white straight PVC pipe here for the lifter markers. It's nice. You can load through those, you know, the black curled tubes. If you can't get them out and you got water in your holes, you're, you're getting wet. Whereas with those, you can just blow them out. Or if you got emulsion, you don't even have to worry about that. So this is a... Uh, incline so I don't have any problem working my way up all the water drains out of the holes no problem you see I got no paint no grid nothing on the face to indicate where the holes are supposed to go I'm just using the drill bit navigation and uh, pretty much line up the dots on the screen I always kind of as I move up the walls or down the walls they always use the the paramedics of the jumbo and keep the top of the drifter closer to the the walls or the back this gives the the most amount of the closest cut possible and uh, you don't risk rubbing your hoses up against the wall and uh, it keeps the most consistency through the drift as you go So, you know, it's a lot of times you don't like to drill with one boom over top of the other, but uh, I'm pretty confident there's nothing going to come down on this face. And, uh, you know, I, I prepped this one as well, so I've scraped it pretty hard, and I'm not worried about any loose coming down. A lot of times uh, I'll have one boom go directly to the cut. I've been drilling a nine-hole cut for quite some time, and uh, usually I can drill all the, the blast holes in the cut, by the time the other boom is done drilling all of the easers and the perimeter holes. And then uh, once all the easers and perimeter holes are finished, I'll throw a reamer on and ream with the other boom. You know, a lot of times it'll change depending on the corners or, you know, the design of the drift. You know, just doing a, a single decline or single ramp where it's the same all the time. Uh, changes up quite a bit. Usually the common practice is rotate your cuts from left to right. Um, starting to think that you know maybe top cut bottom cut in the center would be better because a lot of times uh, your your cuts on the side to side a lot of times they can be right in the way of your boom so you see how I've got the, the elbows there where the slide it bends the slide with the boom. If your your cut is right in front of that, a lot of the times it's it's quite hard to get. You have to be either upside down or drill your left cut with the, your right boom. Whereas in if your cut was high and low in the center, you always have the versatility to drill it with either or boom or both. And, you know, if it's uh, really bad ground, it's preferable to do the cut higher up because then there's, there's less weight and pressure on it. So it doesn't squeeze as much. It'll be easier to load from a basket. Uh, I used to just do my cuts really low because it makes it nice and easy for the loaders. You just load all your top stuff from the basket and then uh, the one guy can load it easily from the ground and it's all easy to tie in, especially if you're using handy debts. You know, sometimes handy deaths, they can be pretty messy. And if you got to cut high up, uh, sometimes it can get confusing for people on how exactly to tie them all in or they get lost. So it's nice if they can just tie it all in at the end, and not, not as they go. It's easier for them to not screw up. So you can see with my left boom reaming there how close the back of the slide is to the elbow. That's a good example of why it's nicer to have it in the center high or low 
the you uh, you don't get that restriction. So I've already finished reaming my cut with the left boom, bang the reamer off there, and uh, you know my right boom still has some drilling to do. Preferably, they finish exactly at the same time. So you know sometimes if one side of the face is softer. Uh, it uh, they can they don't always finish at the same time. You see, I burned off a bit there too, so that took me a little bit of extra time. I'm just kind of running the holes, and you can see I get a little impatient with my left boom. See if I can start my slash. No, I can't do it. So it almost bugs me to only have one one boom drilling. So you can see, I just gave up. I'll just finish with my right boom, and. Uh, start preparing mentally for the slashes so i'm starting to check out everything get myself lined up so the the surveyors painted the start and finish of the slashes so i'm backing up into position you know get my booms i'm kind of eyeballing it where i need to go check my print Confirm everything and uh, start drilling. So I got a slash on the right and a slash on the left here, and it'll be a big four way intersection. And when you're blasting these, it's important that they all go at the same time. If one slash goes before the other or both slashes go before the face, there's a high chance that uh, fly rock will hit the other caps and you'll you'll screw up one of the rounds. And you know, if you take a slash right in front of the face and then you bury the face and it doesn't go and you got powder and caps all hanging there, it is a total nightmare. Because then you got to start thinking about mucking the round with it all loaded there. Of course, you disconnect all the electrics, but you still have all the powder in the caps, and it's it's not a good scenario. So I see I got my lifter tubes in there, and I got all the bottom holes done on the right side, and I got some top stuff to finish with the right boom. So I'm actually going to get started on the left right away because they're both in the same spot, drilling the chamfers. And uh, for a lot of my slashes, you know, I like to, because I don't have enough room to go right sideways, I'll just fan it out and make a nice chamfer and try to make a nice face. So then when I come in with these uh, 422s, I'll just do a nice square up. And uh, so long as my face and my chamfer is nice from the slash and it's a nice perimeter, you know, I'm happy with that. I don't need to take big monster slashes um, you know either way is good if you can take a big monster slash but uh, I usually just do a quick fan take out what I need to not open up too much ground so you see I've finished most of the right slash with my right boom because uh, once the chamfer is done I don't need to go right sideways and uh, with the these booms, it's like one boom can drill the top right sideways and one boom drills the bottoms right sideways and then they kind of switch. So I'm just double checking, confirming everything looks good on the right side and I'll get started on the left side up on the top here. And uh, you know, it's better actually if you start the booms close together when you're doing the slashes and then they just kind of move together so you know you start with your elbows right on top of each other drill a hole and then that boom moves up and then you drill your bottom hole and then that move moves up and then it kind of you know visually if you don't have a computer to tell you where you've drilled your holes it kind of helps you keep track of it so you know and you, you can always keep the booms drilling that way too you just let one your top boom be one hole ahead and then the bottom boom catches up and then your top booms one hole ahead and then your bottom catches up and then you don't run into the scenario where 
oh, you've drilled all your top holes, but you can't drill your bottom holes now because your bottom boom is drilling your knee holes. And then they'll just run any, into each other, and then you have a, a boom that's idle. So the idea is you always want both your booms drilling to the best of their potential. As soon as one's idle, you're, you're potentially just wasting time. So it's ideal to always have them drilling. Bits. A lot of times, you know, with drilling slashes, you can see how I got all the ground support in there. Drilling through rebar, drilling through screen, running into rebar. Uh, you can burn through some bits and the loading can be kind of troublesome sometimes. So it's, sometimes it's harder to do a nice job, but it is important because, you know, you think, oh, it's a slash, it's half a round. It should go quick, but a lot of times it, it takes a lot longer and... You know, when you're planning your day, you don't allocate enough time for the slash or enough time and everything starts going sideways and, you know, you end up running out of time, working late to try and get a the slash and then it's like, oh, well, it's not like it's a whole round. What was the big deal? Just making sure that uh, the top um, shoulder is all taken out properly and you see how you know my bottom is all finished and I I've had to flip my left side around just to help catch up with all the holes I like to put some PVC pipe in there if I'm unsure make sure it all like looks fanned out properly oh and I must have uh, not been able to reach the bottom couple of holes here or you know I was like eh. I kind of have a more the merrier uh, holes when it comes to slashes uh, as long as they're there, it just gives the loaders more opportunity and more chance to load holes. Some of them are collapsed, some of them are into rebar. You know, they don't have to load them all, all but at least they're there. So if they're having trouble, they have another option. Well, I'll wrap the booms up and get this jumbo out of here. The loaders are just dying to get in here and it's close to the end of the day, I'm sure.